What's up guys, hope you're doing well. I know you're probably very shocked because you're probably expecting a floating PNG in an abstract background. Let me tell you, the camera videos are back. Now don't get me wrong, the PNG format, I love it and it's still going to be on the channel. But thankfully, after three years of having the channel, I finally made the investment and got myself a tripod. So expect to see more videos with more variety, like this type of format or printing logs, which I wanted to do for a while, but wasn't able to because recording without a tripod is a pain in the ass. So that's something I wanted to clear it out, now let's get into today's video. In today's video we're going to delve into a topic that has been milked into oblivion by most fitness salaries. Now it's not HIT, it's not power building, yeah, I'm talking about bulking. Now, bulking is fairly simple, you eat more than you burn. Usually you want to make sure that the amount of food you intake compared to the one that you burn is not super low, but not super high. So a middle ground between a high surplus and a low surplus. Also on top of that, you want to make sure that your food sources are high quality, you get proper sleep, proper training, and proper hydration to follow. With that, I summarize 90% of YouTube fitness content minus the 10 days worth of sponsors. So thank me for that. The thing that I want to talk about in this video is not bulking in itself, but how bulking relates to bodyweight bodybuilding. Bodyweight bodybuilding being the method by which you grow muscles by just employing your own bodyweight. That'd be bodyweight calisthenics, not weighted, just straight up bodyweight. And I believe they counterintuitively to what you might expect, bodyweight bodybuilding and bulking actually get along pretty well and have a lot of synergy. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. I'm going to tell you how bulking affects bodyweight bodybuilding, how bodyweight bodybuilding keeps bulking in check, and then I'm going to tell you a concept that you need to apply when approaching bodyweight bodybuilding while you're bulking. Take a shot every time I say bodyweight bodybuilding. <laughs> so stay tuned. And let's get into it. The first thing we need to keep in mind when we're talking about bodyweight bodybuilding is the fact that we don't progress via weight. But in fact, we use the other variables besides weight to induce progressive overload. For example, we go from a rack chin to an eccentric pull up, to a pull up, to a chest bar pull up, to a sternum pull up, and then to one arm chin up variations. But at the beginning, it's not noticeable the issue that lies there. And that is that as you get more advanced, the progressions you have to do increase in terms of technical demands. And this is a bad thing for hypertrophy, because the more unstable and technical a movement is, the less effective it is to allow you to take your muscles close to failure, which in terms make it bad for hypertrophy. So how can we solve this? A lot of people that do calisthenics for bodybuilding actually have this issue, and that is because they're afraid to bulk. How can bulking solve this issue, you might ask? If you think about it, you're getting heavier, so the weight you're working with is actually increasing, developing your absolute strength. You as a bodybuilder want to develop both the absolute strength and the relative strength, so you can be very jacked, but also be at a reasonable body fat percentage. The bulking affecting the body weight movements is actually going to allow you to develop more of your absolute strength. Yeah, it's going to take a little bit from your relative strength, but it's still going to be in acceptable parameters. Then we're going to talk about what happens when you neglect relative strength. In terms of the movements you're going to be doing, because you're going to be doing movements that are very more out of less weight, so they're going to have a lot of disadvantageous leverages, those slight increases in body weight that you're going to have are actually going to affect you a lot in terms of performance. Your 15 chest to bar pull-ups are quickly going to turn into five, and maybe you have to even regress to regular pull-ups. And you might think this is a bad thing, but in reality, it's actually good, because you're able to go back to very basic movements and don't have to worry about the technical aspects of what you're doing. In summary, it allows you to simplify your program and it allows you to go back to movements that you thought were not in the menu because you were getting too strong and are able to squeeze them. And you're able to milk them and you're able to and you're able to reuse them and milk them for hypertrophy as much as humanly possible. So now we're going to move to the next section. I mentioned in the previous section that you want to develop both your absolute strength and your relative strength. But what happens if you neglect the relative strength, as it happens a lot in the weightlifting world? You see, a lot of people will start bulking, for example, in the hopes of getting jacked. So then they start tracking their workouts and see their bench press going up. Track the number of plates they have on the bar or the cable stack if they're gay, and what ends up happening is that as their body weight increases, of course, because mass moves mass, they start seeing an increase in their performance. So they attribute all of the body weight that they gained to muscle gain instead of realizing that most of it is actually fat. So we see a lot of people getting obese or horizontally challenged, as we call them in 2024, because they believe they're gaining tons of muscle because their bench press is shooting up to the sky, when in reality it's that they're becoming the next Lizzo. 
something that we have to keep in mind is also the relative strength aspect and not just the absolute strength. And believe it or not, the simple weight bulking helps bodyweight movements simplifying the process. Bodyweight movements help taking the bulk as effectively as possible because it's going to show. As I previously said, if you get too heavy too fast, it's going to show in your performance on bodyweight movements. So then you can realize and you can adjust for the future. For example, you're doing 10 pull-ups and we we'll just start doing your bulk, for example, and your pull-ups drop from 10 to 3. What was once a 10 rep max is now a 3 rep max. So then you consider, hmm, I lost 7 reps of my pull-ups in just 2 weeks. What is going on? Well, you're getting fat. So then you can adjust what is going on and fix your bulk. Now, something extra I want to mention when it comes to bodyweight bodybuilding and bulking is that when you start bulking, your work capacity actually goes down because you get heavy. But there are ways of remedying this. Of course, you can do your GBP, right? But I think it's too time consuming for most people, unless you make a living out of fitness. For most people, what I would recommend is incorporating supersets, circus style training, and or high reps. <coughs> oh man, cut a, cut a cold I think. What I'm trying to get at is that bodyweight bodybuilding has movements that fit perfectly with these schemes. You can superset easily pull-ups and push-ups, pull-ups and dips, your ring isolation, for example, you can do your ring curls, ring extensions, and ring face pulls, for example. Circus style training, of course, you can do your push-ups, pull-ups, squats, ring isolation, you can superset them however you want. So calisthenics is very versatile in that aspect. And in terms of high reps, I mean, what better practice to go high reps than calisthenics? Oh, push-ups are too easy because I can do 35 of them. Well, then do them, and it's going to condition you. So you have basically a problem that bulking has, and then you have the solution right next to it. And not only that, you have the synergy that I talked about before. So make sure that you include bodyweight movements when you're bulking. And now we can move on to the final section. For this last section, the thing that I want to talk about is a core concept regarding programming. Because we know that with bodyweight bodybuilding, as we get heavier, as I previously said three times already, your performance is going to go down. But we want to prevent that as much as possible, maintaining as much relative strength as possible, while also maintaining or increasing our absolute strength. So how can we do this? We use the concept that I like to call reverse double progression. It's like double progression, but in reverse. How do we do it? Fairly simple. The double progression, we know we have, for example, pull-ups, three sets of six to 10. We start off with six, 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 then we try to do seven, six, six, then seven, seven, six, and so on and so forth, until we reach 10, 10, 10. And then we apply progressive overload via weight, for example, or adding an extra set, and then we keep going, we repeat the cycle. With reverse double progression, we do the exact same, but in reverse, and try to maintain the numbers as high as possible. For example, we do three sets of 6 to 10 with chest to bar pull-ups. At the beginning, we are, for example, 10, 10, 10. Then we start increasing our body weight via bulking, and what ends up happening is that our performance starts to drop. So what happens is that you go from 10, 10, 10 to, for example, 10, 10, 8, then to 10, 8, 8. Then eventually, you might reach 10, 8, 6. What happens in this case is that you want to take away a rep from the middle set, so you are 10, 7, 6. So in that way, the last set, you ensure that it's taking to failure, but also you are within the desired rep range. You keep doing that until you reach 10, 6, 6 or 8, 6, 6, for example, and then you repeat the thing you did with the middle set with the first set and you take away a rep. And then you are 7, 6, 6. Once you reach 6, 6, 6, then you regress in terms of variation for the next session. So then the next session, you do pull-ups, 10, 10, 10, and then you repeat. This is how you do reverse double progression. As you can see, it's a very simple concept that you can apply, but it has a lot of benefits because it forces you to maintain a high amount of relative strength performance while your absolute strength is increasing. And that way, you can maintain both your relative strength and your absolute strength. Finally, in conclusion in this video, we can see that bodyweight bodybuilding and bulking have a lot of synergy together and should be used both as a tool to increase your relative strength and your absolute strength, getting jacked in the process. So this is all for today's video. Let me know what you think about this format. Did you like it? Did you not? Do you want more videos like this or prefer the PNG style? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.